Hello and welcome to Tinglewinger 5. Today we're going to be looking at how you can set up your own NAS drive. So this is network attached storage and the model I'm going to be using is the D-Link DNS320L. It's a mid-range model, nothing too special about it, but it's, you know, exactly in the middle there in that uh, diagram actually. That's quite convenient. So it's got two bays that supports up to two hard drives. It has cloud enabled, which I'll go on to in a bit. It has apps for both Android and iOS, and to get into it, you do need a knife. So cutting into this nice big box, you'll find the NAS unit and everything you need to connect it to your home network. This NAS is the top of the SATA 2 spectrum, so the two models above this actually support SATA 3. This one only supports SATA 2, unfortunately. Not something I knew going in, it's a very vague description on the box saying faster transfer rates. Uh, it took me a while to realise what that was. Then I started backing up everything and the max speed I could get is 300 megabit. Now that'll be alright for most people but bear in mind this is a NAS so you're supposed to have a lot of storage. Taking it out of the packaging there's those plastic styrofoam polystyrene as we say here uh, things and it's a plastic bag and it just houses this thing which is essentially a plastic box that's all it is. It's got a button for USB on the front and a power button. On the back you'll find a gigabit ethernet interface, the power supply and a USB port. I believe that's USB 2. And of course your Kingston lock. So popping off the top, you'll see inside the circuit board I talked about. You can see the SATA connectors down there, so it'll tell you how to put them in. And they're in fact inside this cardboard box which I'm about to show you, you'll find the drive mounts which help you even better to put it in. So in this plastic box you get a nice Cat5e Ethernet cable, the hard drive mounts I was telling you about. They don't look like mounts, but they'll get to that. Uh, the plug actually itself comes with the EU adapter, so I straight away put the UK adapter onto it. Normal power supply, nothing too special about it. And as I said, this is a Cat5e Ethernet cable supporting gigabit Ethernet. There's also all the documentation you expect, so there's the CD, which you do have to use initially. Uh, share center wipes your hard drives, well, I kind of guess that anyway. Uh, all this stuff, warranty information, quick installation guide, this is kind of what I'm showing you so there's no point in that document anymore. And here's how to connect up the hard drives. So you've got to take the rusty screwdriver you can find and you've got to screw these in. So literally they just screw into the top of the drive so you can drop them in. They're more of a handle than a mount really. And you end up like this, so you end up with the curve down which actually follows the box. So it tells you which side this hard drive needs to be put in. So sliding it down can take a little bit, you're not really going to break them, so you can be kind you obviously be careful but you don't have to be too gentle with it so it took a couple of attempts but I pushed it down and eventually it clicks into place like this and you can tell it's clicked because that comes up just about level with the rest of it popping the top back on right simple nice clip and hinge and I even left this bit in just for you guys As most of you will know already, this is a NAS, it's not an external hard drive, but it kind of functions in a similar way. This actually connects to your router, it does not connect straight to your PC. So what I'm doing here is plugging it up to the router. This is the one you've seen in a previous video, it's a little bit more scratched up now because it's been moved around a lot. But powering it on, you get a flashing light, and then you get left and right on your hard drives. That's how you know it's working. As I'll show you later, there is both an Android and an iOS app which works somewhat well for them both, but it works over the internet, so it's fine. So this is a PC setup. I imagine most NAS drives will come with everything like this. Again, this is for pretty much every NAS drive. They'll all be pretty similar. Uh, this is D-Link insulation, so it's very patronizing. Uh, insulation disc, you go through it all. It just says how to put everything in. I promise the frame weight will pick up a little bit more. I had a problem with the recorder. Uh, pull the top out, put hard drives in, blah blah blah. We've already done this, already done this. And it even tells you to power on the NAS. But we come to the selected device screen and I had a couple of issues. Uh, it just didn't pick it up for a little while, but eventually it did. Uh, the DHCP wasn't quite working I don't think, but hey. Now it's up. So check the LEDs blinking. Well, there's no other NAS in my network, so I don't understand why this exists. I guess you have multiple NASs, but... It's, psst, don't understand. Uh, default password is blank, so if you just carry on, then you can actually add the password. 
Now later on if you have to run this setup again, that password will become the password you set here. So I'm going to enter my password now for my NAS. No, you can't have it. And carry on with the installation. We end up with the device LAN. You can set it to DHCP, which will be fine for most of you. Uh, I ended up setting a static IP eventually. Just, I mean, you can reserve it, but I wanted to bridge it with my actual PC up here, which maybe I'll do a different video for. Uh, name it whatever you please. This is how it will be shown on the network. So NAS, uh, description, well, doesn't make any difference really. Windows doesn't tend to use it too much. And the work group has to match your PC. Now, for most of you, that will be work group because you just haven't changed it. But for some business people, that might be different. Dynamic DNS, I don't have one. I have no point in setting one up. Uh, set your time zone up. So GMT for me. Enable the NTP server, that's network time protocol. And just use the D-Link one. Just keep things simple. But for business users, again, you may have a different NTP server you want to use. Uh, it takes a little bit of time to get past this bit for some reason. It just took a while contacting the server, I'm guessing. The date actually was well, it was quite wrong there, in fairness. Got the year right. Login method. Uh, this is email settings. Again, I had a problem with the installation at this point. You have to send a test email, uh, otherwise it will crash. Even if you just enter a random address and everything fails, that's fine. Uh, okay, so current RAID type is how you're setting it up. You can have standard, which is one or more separate volumes. Each hard drive is its own volume. So we can have two three terabyte volumes there. JBOD, which combines two hard drives in a linear fashion, which will create one large volume. I ended up going for a RAID 0, because it will combine two hard drives in a striped fashion, create one large volume. And RAID 1, RAID 1 will mirror everything from one hard drive to the other. I wanted a RAID 0, just because I wanted big storage. Essentially a backup drive is what I, all I want. So I back it up on my PC and now I'm going to back it up to a NAS as well. Then you press next and that will start formatting. After you finish formatting you'll see it sits at 100% for a little while but then tells you the format is successful. Now different NASs will support different RAID types, this is just what this D-Link supports. Uh, at this point for D-Link press yes, there's no way to set it up afterwards, just press yes. It's so much easier if you do it now because you can access it on your Android and your iOS devices. Uh, so we've got 6 terabytes of storage essentially, just a bit taken off for the RAID and just the disk size really. Uh, you can start copying everything over. It's all set up at 192.168.1.77 private IP address. Now if you point your browser to the IP address it's bound to, you'll end up at the web interface. We end up with some recent activities over here, so there's authentication for me failed at some point and well, there's all sorts going on. The recent activity is actually uh, a really nice feature, I think. So, it'll, And you can download the logs at different points. And downloading firmware, you can't do it from the NAS, which I found a little weird. It's got all this storage, but it can't do it itself. Uh, land link speed is already at a gigabit, I found out. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been able to make the 300 megabit uh, speed of the hard drives. And, well, you've got lots of settings you can play with. Dynamic DNS, the port forwarding... So UPnP on the router which you can set up and of course you can go to the actual router and you can set a static IP address essentially where it's more of a reserved DHCP address. Updating the NAS is really easy and it even has connection to Amazon S3 if you have an account. But again updating the NAS very easy, you just go to the D-Link website, download it to your computer and the NAS will take it from you and upgrade it itself. In my file section, there's nothing in here yet, but it sets volume 1 up, and you set a user up, you set as many as you want, and the access they get. So if you want users to read, users to write and read, it's all there. Now this is the iOS app. We've got stay signed in, I've turned on, and we sign in. This will connect anywhere you are. So at the moment I'm on my home Wi-Fi, but I went to university, and I can still access my NAS, still access all my files. It's very clever. You don't have to establish the multimedia library no matter what it says. You can just literally go to My Files and choose your file there. However, file types are quite limited. So be wary of that and make sure your files are in the right format. Music it seems fine, images it was a bit iffy, and videos there was very little support. The Android app was always going to be better for this because it's not as restricted. and It just makes copying files to and from the device a lot easier. But the iPad had the bigger screen so I thought I'd record on that. 
So thank you for watching everyone. See you next time.